Now we're going to see a shortcut way of writing certain kinds of AND inequalities. If we have an inequality like this, x is greater than negative 3 and x is less than or equal to 2. So when we sketch this, here's negative 3, here's 2. Here's x is greater than negative 3. Here's x is less than 2. They overlap in between here. So the overlap is just this line segment. In this case, where we have an AND inequality, where the overlap is a line segment, we can rewrite it. We can rewrite that by stringing together two inequalities. Notice when we can do that. There's only very special circumstances under which we can actually write that. We can only do it when we're dealing with an AND inequality and the overlap has a left end and a right end. In other words, we can do that when both of the inequalities that we end up writing point the same way and the inequality is also true of the ends. So here, notice negative 3 really is less than 2. 2 really is greater than negative 3. If this weren't true, we could not write this. Okay. How do we actually go about writing down a between inequality? How did I come up with this? Well, we rewrite our inequalities so that the inequality sign points the same way. And in general, if you're doing this, using less than signs ends up a little bit nicer. So I have x is greater than negative 3 and x is less than or equal to 2. I'm going to rewrite these to both use less than. x is greater than negative 3 means the same as negative 3 is less than x. x is less than or equal to 2. I'm going to keep. If when we do so we're following all the rules, now we can combine the x's. So we say negative 3 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 2. This follows the rule that both inequalities point the same way, and it follows the rule that negative 3 really is less than 2. If we have something like x is greater than 4 and x is greater than 5, Notice that these inequalities already point the same way, and there's no way we can splice them together. We can't rewrite this as a between inequality. Why? Well, if we sketch this, here's 4, here's 5, greater than 4, greater than 5, we see that the overlap is just all the numbers greater than 5. So this isn't saying that x is between two numbers. We could rewrite this as just x is greater than 5. If we have an OR inequality, we can't write that as between. Because writing something like this means that x is between the two endpoints. It means that we have to follow both rules. Why do we even have this? Well, very often we get restrictions that look something like this. 3 is less than or equal to some expression with an x in it, which is less than 5. It's very common to naturally get an inequality where some expression with a variable in it is between two numbers. 
This is, in fact, kind of the most natural sort of compound inequality to get in an application. And using this between notation, we have a shortcut way of solving this. The shortcut is to use solving steps on all three expressions at once. Now notice that that's not required. What's really going on is that we're splitting this up into an AND inequality. 3 is less than or equal to 2x minus 7 and 2x minus 7 is less than 5. We're solving each separately. Add 7 to both sides. Divide both sides by 2. Here we add 7 to both sides. Divide both sides by 2. We write the word AND between them. And then we can put the between inequality back together if we'd like. 5 less than or equal to x less than 6. What does the shortcut look like? Well, we add 7 to all three expressions at the same time. We get 10 less than or equal to 2x is less than 12. We divide all three expressions by 2, and we get 5 less than or equal to x is less than 6. So really what the shortcut saved us is, well, notice that when we solved this inequality and solved this inequality, we did all the same steps. The shortcut saved us having to do all the same steps twice. It meant we could just do them once.